Yeah, I thought I'd share this topic. Uh, very familiar slide of, uh, of a story we all know from our Sunday school days. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. So I'll just read the passage. Adam made love to his wife Eve and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now, Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought, brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? So I uh, was just looking at this whole issue of uh, work. And uh, we tend to think of work in, uh, uh, as, as a curse. We thought that uh, it, it appears as if, uh, as if uh, uh, work is labor and is cursed. It is true. Uh, work was cursed after the fall. But how is it that God really intended work? As uh, we'll be able to see in the, in the passage there, he intended to give man a responsibility. And he took man and put him in the Garden of Eden, which he had already made, and he already planted the trees there. So it's not that uh, Adam was going to start planting it all over again. But he was called to work it and take care of it. See, Adam was given a responsibility of gardening, but taking care of the garden. Uh, husband man, he was really looking after that place. And he was also given authority. God blessed them and said to them, that's Adam and Eve, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. The man was given both authority and responsibility, and he was able to exercise it and enjoy it. He was accountable to the Lord. But uh, <clears throat> he failed to uh, do justice to it. He failed in his responsibility, and he failed to be accountable to God. And he also messed up in the matter of authority, because he actually came under the authority of Satan at that time. But basically, God had intended work as an offering. So we were all, that is how God's plan for work was. And uh, again, in the New Testament, we read about whatever you do, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So we, we offer up our work as an offering. It is given as, a, as something we give thanks for. We get, it's a way we, we can even worship the Lord. Uh, Martin Luther had this very interesting statement to say that the work of monks and priests, however holy and hard they may be, do not differ one bit in the sight of God from the works of the farm laborer in the field or the housewife. So you're saying basically it really doesn't matter whether you're full-time or what-time, there's no part-time, you're all full-time workers for God and we are offering our work unto God. And the difference is that all works are measured before God by faith alone. So it's not the work which is God is looking at, whether you're a farm laborer or a housewife or a monk or priest, whatever. It is your faith. It is our faith as we work that is measured. I mean, this is how Martin Luther looked at it. And he actually revolutionized the very concept of work. And the very Protestant concept of work was uh, a redeeming aspect because that is how Jesus intended it. He came to this world to break the curse on work and to redeem work and restore it to how God had intended it. 
So as you see, these two brothers, they're making these offerings and uh, God is pleased with one, and God is not pleased with the other. So the question often, I mean, comes as what is so special about Abel's offering? And then we may, we start quibbling about it and splitting hairs and people say, uh, uh, this sacrifice and that sacrifice and this work is superior to that. But uh, if you really look at the word, we see actually that what is God looking at? We look at it, the Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. It was not that he was looking at the offering and then saying, oh, Abel, full marks. Oh, Cain, hmm, failed. No, he was looking at Abel. And he was looking with favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So to the person of the, uh, of the individual, rather than uh, what they were presenting before God, it was not their presentation, it was the person who was important to God. So how do we know that, uh, what was it that Abel really understood about God? How did he understand God? It was by faith. Abel had learned how to relate to God. And that is why he was commended for his faith. He's the first person to be commended for his faith way before Abraham. He was able to, Abel was able to reach out to God, to understand the heart of God. He was able to have the dimension of faith, which was largely lost at the Garden of Eden. He was able to relate to God the Father. He was able to relate in a way that Cain could not relate. And that transformed his own inner being. And uh, <clears throat> very clearly in Hebrews, it says that God was looking on Abel's faith. Uh, <clears throat> you see in the foreground about Cain and, and the darkness around and darkness within. And we see the brightness of uh, around uh, Abel. He was in the light as the Lord is in the light. So we, when we begin to realize that faith actually is the dimension of the inner being. And that is in that inner being that the attitudes of our hearts are. And that is where Lord looks at. Our Lord looks at uh, not so much of what are the things we do as how we do our work. And that is uh, related to our attitude. And that is why Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Can you just look into yourself, search your heart? What is your attitude? Can you just find out what is that? Look at yourself instead of looking at Abel and looking with anger towards me. But can you just think for yourself? Why are you angry? What is that attitude problem that you have? Uh, God, I mean, often the Lord wants to tell us this, ask us this question. What's What's wrong? What, what, why are you upset? What is the reason for your being upset? And basically wants us to be able to understand ourselves and recognize that often we are biased and we do not want to look inward. We rather judge outwards. But God wants us to judge our inner being too. He wants us to be able to understand where we are. So why are you angry? What is your face down to us? And that will tell us stories about what attitudes we have, what problems we are having with our attitudes and and if only Cain could have recognized that it was jealousy, it was anger, it was pride, there were so many things within him, uh, unforgiveness, whatever, was, was seething within him. And God was giving him an opportunity to break out of it, to turn to the Lord himself. So how we do our work is uh, related to our attitude, how we do our work. But our attitudes are a consequence of our motives, why we do our work. If we do our work only for our own glory, we will end up in all the wrong attitudes. But if we realize that our work is as unto the Lord, and He has chosen our work. Basically, God has called us to the work he has, uh, he has given us. And we have a calling at the work and our responsibility and our accountability is to God Himself. So, Basically, we search our motives to why are we doing our work and then we realize why we are angry. Uh, why? So basically, if Abel, if Cain had an opportunity to 
if he had actually waited and seen why is he getting angry basically what work is he doing he is worshiping god and why is he worshiping god because he needs to acknowledge that god is almighty and awesome i mean that's the meaning of worship so basically he realized that he should have realized that he was shrinking his work itself the reason for what he was doing the very worship was twisted upside down and he was expecting god to be accountable to him why god is not favor looking in favor on me? so sometimes we uh, we shrink god we want to shrink god uh, instead of acknowledging that he is lord and that is what is worship to acknowledge that he is lord and he is sovereign and what he wills we need to listen and respond to so why we do our work is in response to god's desires and god's plans rather than our desires and our plans uh, <clears throat> the lord look with favor on abel and his offering that reminds us uh, our, is our offering is our work really our identity and uh, sometimes we get lost in that and we need to actually go back to recognizing that we are called to be the children of god because that the father loves us i think abel knew that very closely and deeply as did all the saints who were mentioned in hebrews 11 all the all the men of faith deeply believe uh, loved their lord and uh, yes they may have loved their work but they basically loved the lord and knew the heavenly father as their father and knew themselves as the children of god and then we know ourselves as the workers of god so we work not only to please god but we work because we are pleasing to god and the that's that's a point at which we need to begin all that we do and uh, just to summarize to recognize and realize that work is a gift from god that all work is pleasing to god as long as the as is as, as long as it's done in the right attitude as long as it's done in the spirit of faith in relationship to our heavenly father as long as we know why we are doing our work and because we know that we are called to our work and it's not something that we are dreaming up and trying to do something or something for god but it is something because of god that we do it because god has called us and because we are empowered by god just some moments to reflect on these and to recognize that god is interested in our daily work in our daily lives in our daily worship and he we need to begin our lives in worship just as in romans 12 says that uh, it's not about our work being the only offering it actually our our very lives and our bodies <clears throat> our very thoughts and attitudes all we need to offer unto the lord on the altar and when we do that we will recognize and know his good pleasing and perfect so uh, just uh, i want to thank you for the opportunity to share and may this word bless each of our hearts thank you sir we we'll leave it open for a couple of minutes for anybody who wants to add on or ask questions or share a personal perspective of this and we'll go on to a time of prayer after sharing some prayer and praise points